Hello and welcome to Cashmetics. In a previous lesson, I showed you how the sine rule can be used to find missing sides and angles in a non-right angle triangle. However, it can only be used in certain circumstances. Now there is actually another rule we can use, and this is called the cosine rule. And in this tutorial, I'll show you when and how to use it. So grab yourselves a pen and some paper and let's get started. So the first question we need to answer is when do we use the cosine rule? And it's used for non-right angle triangles and it's used when we have three sides and an angle and it's one of those four things you're trying to calculate. But the main thing to remember is if you're trying to calculate a side you have to know the opposite angle. So let's say I wanted to calculate this side here. Okay, So I need to know this angle. Okay, Without that I can't do it. Along with these two sides. Okay, So these three bits of information are what I need in, in, a, in order to be able to work out this side. And similarly, if I needed to work out angle, uh, side C, I need to know angle C. And if I needed to work out side B, I need to know angle B. So what is, the what is the cosine rule? Now the cosine rule starts a little bit like Pythagoras' theorem. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay, So these are my three sides. Take away 2AB cos C. Okay, so this is written from the perspective of C. Okay, and the thing to note is you've got the side C and the angle C over here. Okay, so the cosine rule will, will involve the side and its opposite angle. Okay, so from the, from the perspective of C, that's how it's written. If I want to write it from the perspective of A, you write A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So again, note that's A and that's A. Or I could write it from the perspective of B. Okay, so B squared equals A squared plus C squared. Take away 2AC cos B. Okay, again, look, side B, angle B. All right, so if you, whenever you're working out a side, you have to know the opposite angle, and I hope that's highlighted in that formula. Now, you're not going to be given that formula in a formula book, so you need to remember it. And the best way to remember it is by writing it down every single time you use it. Okay, so get into the habit of doing that, and hopefully you'll get to remember it okay right so make a note if you need to and then we'll go into some examples right so in these first two examples we look at how to calculate a side and i've got the, uh, the i've got the formula over here so um you can refer to that but on, when you do the questions i'm not going to put it up okay so you need to make the effort to remember it right okay so let's set it up correctly so i look at which angle i've got and I start with the opposite side. Okay, so that's how you start off the cosine rule. So you have to write it in the perspective from the perspective of x. Okay, so x squared equals. Then what you do is you square the other two sides and add them. Okay, so seven squared plus eight squared. Take away two times the two sides you know. And I tend to put them in brackets like that. Okay, so that means two times seven times eight, cos of the angle. Okay, so cos forty. And what I do then is I actually work out this bit separately. And that works out to be 113. Take away, then I work out this bit up to here. And that's in, that, in my case, that's 112. Cos 40. And then I type all of this into the calculator. And if I type that into the calculator, I get 27.2 something. Okay, 2, 0 something. Okay, but what you've got to remember is so far we're only calculating what x squared is. So I need to work out what x is and I need to do the square root of 27.20, whatever it was. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to keep the answer on my calculator display and when I do the square root part, I type in the square root and then press the answer key and then press equals. And that way you get an accurate answer. And if you do that, you get 5.2 centimeters. Oops, not degrees. Okay, centimeters. Right, so that's the final answer. And although my although my diagram isn't to scale, you know, it's not an unreasonable answer. So you know, you can kind of use your diagram to help you see what's work. You know, see if the answer is reasonable. Right, let's look at the next one. So I need to write this one from the perspective of y. Okay, and that's the one I'm calculating. And it has I have to know the opposite angle to be able to do it. Okay, so just like I said in the introduction, I need to know the opposite angle. So y squared equals 11 squared plus 12 squared, so a squared plus b squared, so that's the other two sides, take away 2 times 11 times 12, cos 110, All right? So let's just put this in the calculator, and that will give me 265. 
takeaway and this gives me 264 cos 110. Now there is a strange coincidence going on here. I've got 265 and 264 over here and over on this side I've got 113 and 112. Now it's just a coincidence that this is one less than this. That isn't always going to be the case so don't just assume that's going to be one less. Just please work it out and see what it actually is. Anyway, if I type that into the calculator I get 355 point two nine something and remember at this stage I've only worked out what y squared is so I need to work out what y is by doing the square root of that and again use your answer key to help you get an accurate answer and putting that into your calculator you should get 18.8 centimeters okay so pause the video make some notes okay before you move on to the questions Right, so here's um, here's three questions for you to try. Okay, so take your time, make sure you do you do follow the steps in my working. All right, and that you do take the same number of steps as me. Okay, don't rush it. There's no there's no marks for rushing to the wrong answer. Okay, so take your time with it, and pause the video, and then I'll reveal the answers. So I'm about to reveal the answers now, and there you go. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, managed to get those right. And if you haven't, just look through them again to see where you may have made your mistakes. Right, moving on to calculating an angle. Now, calculating an angle is a little bit tricky. Okay, it's far trickier than calculating a side. And when you have an angle, so when you have a question where you're trying to calculate an angle, you need three sides, and you have to start your cosine rule from the perspective of the side that's opposite the angle you're trying to find. So in this case here, I would start the cosine rule from the perspective of that side there. So let's just start by writing that down. So that gives me 8 squared equals 7 squared plus 9 squared. Take away 2 times 8 times 9 cos x. All right. Now, what it, you really got to take your time here because you could easily make a mistake. There's lots of stuff to rearrange. Okay, so the first thing I do is just work out the numbers I can. So I know that bit is 64. Okay, so the bit on the left is 64. This bit here works out to be 130. Take away, now this bit here works out to be 126 cos x. Okay, now I have to do some rearranging here. So what I do is I move this term to the other side and it becomes positive on the other side and this term over to the right hand side where it will be subtracted. So what I end up with is 126 cos x equals 130 take away 64. So let's just work out what 120, I'm sorry, 130 take away 64 is, and that is 66. At this stage here, I divide by 126 to get cos x equals 66 divided by 126, which gives me 0.523, so 0.523, it just carries on, okay, store that on your calculator by, you know, when you press equals, that will be stored in the answer, then you do x equals the inverse cos off that answer, so 0.523, and the angle you get is 58.4 degrees. Okay, so that's the first one. Now this second one over here is slightly trickier, okay, and you'll see why in a bit, so I'll take my time with this one. Okay, so the angle I'm trying to find is y, and the side opposite is this one here, so I'll write it from the perspective of that. So 16 squared is equal to 11 squared add 7 squared, take away 2 times 11 times 7 cos y. Okay, now don't mistake that for cosy, it's cos y. Okay, so this is 256 equals um, 170. Okay, that is that bit there. Take away 154, okay, which is that bit there, cos y. And just like before, I need to move the cos y term to the other side. So 154 cos y equals 170 take away 256 okay it's always this number in this position take away this number okay now you'll see I've got a small number here and a big number here so I'm gonna get a negative number and that's fine okay you'll get a negative number in the case of an obtuse angle so 154 cos y equals minus 86 and then I divide by 154 so cos y equals minus 86 divided by 154, okay, and that gives me minus 0 
eight something, right? And then I do the inverse cos of that. Remember, use your answer key. Oops, that's a minus. And you end up with 123.9 degrees, right? So try and try and make some good notes. Digest as much of that as you can. Okay, and before we move on, I'm going to show you another thing some students like to do, but it all depends on the strength of your algebra. So make some notes there, and they'll tell you what else you could possibly try. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this so you can see what else you could have done. Okay, now what some people like to do is they like to rearrange this formula. So let's just write c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. Right, so if you think about it, if I want to move that term to the other side, that'd be 2ab cos c, and then subtract c squared from this side, so a squared plus b squared take away c squared. So if your algebra is strong, by all means do this. And then what I need to do is divide by 2ab, so a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. And I plug this into my calculator, and then I need to do the inverse cos once I've got the answer to that. Now, if your algebra is strong, you could do it when you need it. If your algebra is weak, you could possibly try and remember this, but the problem is then you'd have to remember this formula as well as this formula here. But if your memory is good and you can remember it, by all means, go for it. Okay. Failing that, you could try the method I showed you over here. So you've got several ways you can try and do this. Anyway, make a note of that if you need to, and then I'll go on to the, the questions on calculating an angle. All right, so here we are, three questions. Okay, give them a go. Take your time with your working and you know, just check to see if your answer is reasonable. I know these sketches aren't to scale, okay, I mean, but they're not far off, okay, apart from the last one perhaps. Okay, that four centimeters, if that's four and that's twelve, that is a little bit far off. So this angle is probably going to be bigger than how it looks, okay, but these should these two will give you an acute an an angle and this one will give you an obtuse one. But just see how you get on. Alright, so if you haven't paused the video, please pause it because I'm about to reveal the answers. And here they go. All right, so those are your answers. Okay, uh, just check them, and, and if you made any mistakes, just look through to see where you might have made some errors. And that's it. That's the cosine rule done. So you you should already know the sine rule if you've watched my other video. If you haven't, please go and watch it because that's for a different set of circumstances. This is the cosine rule. But remember, if you do have a right angle triangle, it's much much easier to use the Sokotoa. Uh, it's much more straightforward. Anyway, I hope that's helped you to understand it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.